good evening to all of you and uh, i welcome you all to this uh, ninth webinar of the tata tiscon uh, e discovery series uh, i am really thankful to tatas and tiscon for having um, allowed me to, to uh, take this seminar and i also appreciate this uh, effort that they are taking by conducting these different seminars allowing all of us to interact with each other and uh, also allowing us to share whatever we have knowledge we have of uh, of structures etc etc and uh, yes i find that uh, it is it is a very good medium normally we used to attend lectures and uh, then it becomes very difficult to keep on going to different uh, cities or countries and uh, taking these lectures traveling here and there but these webinars are a real help they are really helping us into you know they are closing all boundaries and all horizons and we can talk to each other across countries across cities and uh, it's also i mean you could be sitting in a classroom you could be sitting maybe in your office or maybe anywhere traveling you could be watching this on your mobile and uh, it it helps i mean so uh, again many thanks to tata tiscon for allowing me to share my my thoughts and my uh, views on this uh, in this I, i'll just brief you about what we plan to talk about today uh, i'm not i'm not talking to you or i'm not sharing some designs that i have done i think we have already done that i've shared all my design not all but some of my designs in the last webinar but today uh, i i am trying to share with you something that has fascinated me and i am sure it has fascinated you also to a large extent nowadays we see that the shapes of buildings are taking uh, you can say not 3d but 4d and 5d forms they are uh, i mean we are all fascinated by the extent to which we can see buildings being built the fantastic shapes that are happening and uh, it always got me worried as a designer i would say that whenever i get a project of this scale will i be able to do justice to it will i be able to really uh, get down to the backbone because all these shapes are you can say not finite shapes but they are, they are something else and all these designs again consequently will be one of a kind they will not be found or stored in textbooks or uh, it will not be uh, used as a reference but uh, everything right from formulating the structural system to uh, taking the designs and looking at what other aspects also would arise from the designs all these things have to be taken care of in these designs so uh, i am trying to i mean uh, i also look at so many structures that are trying to, uh, that are built and then uh, i try and understand how they were built what is the structural system that went into them is uh, something totally different is it that only we just pick up all the shapes that architect tells us and then we put into a finite element computer a program and then look at the answers i realized that no that is not the case for everything that gets built there has to be a finite connection to it i realized that all these weird or odd shapes though they may look odd when connected to uh, structures uh, to to a building shape or whatever are not necessarily uh, free form shapes if the building has to be stable if the structural integrity has to be maintained i realize that all these shapes have to be derived out of some uh, specific finite shape and uh, that has got me thinking of how do we again then try and generate these different shapes how how what happens and then uh, we will look at some structures and try and understand what could be the structural system and uh, how uh, people have tried to you know formulate the issue and uh, taken it and uh, you know design the structure so we will uh, look at some you can say uh, special shapes of structures the, all these structures have been constructed all over the world and uh, i will try and uh, share my thoughts and uh, my thoughts about the structural systems that have gone into these shapes now all of us are fascinated today or most of architects that we discuss are uh, you can say 
fond of unfamiliar or unconventional shapes and uh, due to these unconventional shapes there are lots of uh, issues that happen we as engineers firstly those all these type of buildings are are being built as iconic buildings nowadays they they become the sort of face of a city or face of an institution and uh, they th that becomes part of that iconic uh, element that goes along with that institution or with that city or even the country and uh, uh, let us look at uh, try and look at the fundamentals that went into some of the structures and try and understand how people tried to design them what special efforts they did or maybe try and understand what we can do nowadays you know that architects ex uh, expect elaborate shapes sometimes even arbitrary forms and these arbitrary forms could even you know represent a, a structural or a sculptural object also and uh, we as engineers have lots of problems with these because these building envelopes cannot be formulated by mathematical equations and if they cannot be formulated by you can say the whole building shape cannot be put into one equation they become a combination of so many different equations and if they cannot be formulated by consistent equations then can they really be put into a, a stiffness matrix program and analyzed so many issues we are as engineers are facing and then also because of these different shapes the distinction of the structural elements begins to diminish since they are not of course composed of actual grids but uh, by distinctions i mean that all of us are very clear with the idea that the columns need to be vertical they are going to share the gravity loads from the beams and the slabs and uh, in all these structures or all these shapes we realize that a column may not be essentially vertical a beam also may not be horizontal there are so many different uh, ways in which they are going to be represented and uh, the load paths are going to be different there uh, you can say because of the geometry not all the members all the members are going to be equally loaded and uh, there are so many aspects to all this so again as we say the third part essentially is building envelopes are primarily decided by building skeletons which we are all used to doing but when we are confronted with odd shapes this is not necessarily true nowadays we find that computer nurtured nurtured design models of complex shapes cause they cause you can say complicated structural framings and uh, most of the times these framings are not required for structural elements or supporting the maybe the floors or the walls but they are required for supporting the external shape also so that is another aspect that goes into the design of the buildings because of all these odd shapes we normally find that most of the spaces that are being created inside the building may be unreasonable may be unusable also but they go with the shape i mean that is what like for example you take this plan we find that there are so many shapes here so many areas here which really cannot be put to very good use you can say or if i take a section a similar section of uh, a different shape we find that there are so many places along the ceilings uh, or maybe at corners also where uh, we cannot positively use them as they are but yes they are part and parcel of you can say that building and they have to be there sometimes in our design we have to try and avoid all these dead spaces and all these dead spaces and these odd shapes would give rise to structural irregularities and then uh, we have to really think that uh, is it just something that we draw or somebody imagines and then we have to go ahead and construct it but no the fundamental principle in all these shapes is that all these shapes have to be derived from some finite geometry from some finite basic shape and they you could say that it could be a combination of two shapes it could be uh, maybe like we have hyperbolic par paraboloids which are you can say surface of revolution of two intersecting parabolas but uh, you cannot have something which is free flow and then say that yes i build it there has to be a finite logic this is what i realized after i studied all these things and uh, i'm just sharing you some of the projects that i looked at and i try to understand the structural framing in that uh, in those projects 
I try to understand what these people have done extra to generate those type of shapes. Sometimes I realize that they have stuck to the basics and put on a lot of other things which makes it really fantastic that shape. And uh, actually that is what all of us have to learn that uh, the basics are important. We have to find means by which we can fit all these shapes into some basic, uh, you can say, first principles, analyze it accordingly, and then uh, you can say, construct this uh, shape. So um, we can, we'll try and understand the fundamentals of trying to generate such finite shapes, maybe in 2D and 3D. 2D, uh, all of us are, we are not very uh, used to, you can say, 2D nowadays because of computers and 3Ds and graphics. We are all, but uh, the generating these shapes can be put down to, you can say, generating shapes out of a sheet. You know, how do we cut a sheet, a two-dimensional sheet, and generate shapes out of it? Hmm? It is a series of cuts. You know, they are uh, various cuts. The cuts are defined into multi-level, the hierarchical cuts. Also, there are different motives attached to these cuts. By doing this, we can transform a simple shape into a complex shape. For example, if you look at this picture, we'll see that we have a rectangle here. This rectangle, we are going to have a series of cuts like a vertical cut and two horizontal cuts. And then we just, the motifs or the things, we can change them, we can rotate them, we can shift them. And you can see that these, this small square can be transformed into so many different sort of shapes. Uh, these are just vertical and horizontal cuts. If I take some oblique cuts also, then we can generate similar shapes. You can say that this is a hexagon. I take this hexagon and make uh, four cuts to it. And then I can generate so many different shapes. But when I am doing this, then I can be assured that whatever shape I build will have a definite geometry. It can be defined. The coordinates can be found out. And once that happens, we'll, you will be able to, you know, generate a computer model of that and, uh, you know, be able to uh, design it and analyze it also. Again, as we say, uh, there are some, these are some higher level shapes, you can say. This is level zero, where I have maybe only two cuts. And then this doesn't go on, you know. I take uh, level two, where I have two, three cuts, and then uh, lots of things open for me. By doing this, my shapes can be extended to various forms. Then I take more cuts, you can say, as I say, uh, the level increases or the hierarchy increases. And then the shape that can be generated can you know, go on. You can say, as my level increases, the complexity of my shape goes up. So you can say, we can start doing this. We can say level zero, it doesn't expand. Level zero, then we can have, uh, for example, you can go back and see for level, then I can have these shapes rotated also not just transformed. Then level three, we can have sort of increasingly complex uh, structures. Then, as I said, the motifs. I mean, I start from a square and you can say we can end up anywhere. You can say A, B, C, D are various forms where you can end up. The motifs, uh, here we can say that we have only one angle of rotating this, while we can also rotate it in an another angle so we can have alpha and beta and so that results in various types of structures so if we really study these patterns carefully then we can find that by just taking starting with a simple pattern we can go on and we can mix different regions and uh, different cut levels and uh, you can you know take these structures to uh, various levels like cuts and uh, motifs you can say so you can say how these patterns will progress and how many cuts and how many motives. You can really transform, a, 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 you can say, a 2D space into a, uh, into a totally different shape. <clears throat> Here you can see that uh, I start from a square or a rectangle. Then I can take that to various levels, various levels. Uh, for example, I mean, uh, we have a silicon rubber sheet where uh, it is just a plain sheet. I'm trying to stretch it on this sort of a, uh, you can say a semi semicircular this thing. And depending upon the type of cuts that I put onto that sheet, you can say the different type of shapes are being formed. So our buildings 
have to be similar to this i mean they have to follow a pattern then that pattern can be uh, in disarray you can say if you want but then unless you have a specific pattern your building the structural issues are not going to be uh, a perfect example i found is this uh, pedestrian bridge uh, which has been constructed in belgium this pedestrian bridge is used to you can say there are two tram lines below and two roads actually i was very fascinated by this shape i mean i always thought that we should have a plain truss and what is this how have they constructed it so i tried to find out the structural system you can see this uh, bridge is located on the coast it is collecting connecting a village uh, with the beach and it is crossing a coastal road and a double tram line uh, you can see that the overall structure is essentially consisting of two uh, you can say irregular very irregular timber uh, warren trusses these trusses are actually supported by reinforced concrete portal frames and uh, these trusses are sort of you can say mechano like they are assembled together in different layers and in different in different shapes and they sort of create a lot of visual interest architecturally but uh, as structural engineers these shapes also create great eccentricities which form you can say secondary moments lead to lot of secondary moments the top and bottom chord of these this uh, bridge are uh, uh, our main members Uh, are a sort of built up beams and they are held together by packers this is just a, a structural diagram of this we can see the packers here we can see the top cord the bottom cord on each concrete portal frame there is a steel frame between the wooden members which provides the overall lateral stability though we look at it this way this structure is not essentially three dimensional this lecture this structure is essentially only two dimensional and if you look at the results uh, this uh, you see here is a you can say a, a diagram is showing the tension and compression generated in the members and you can see that uh, it fo follows this principle that diagonals are in tension but not all diagonals are in tension so all this has to be checked as we are going in for these unconventional shapes also this is what i told you this is the way they have been sort of pasted together on a, a top top member this is the top view and uh, the main issue is that the eccentricity is created or the secondary stresses that are generated because of these odd shapes have to be really taken care of and uh, they lead to secondary moments and uh, they should be properly designed for for these structures and as i said though it uh, is a, a 3d structure by design it is not essentially 3d we can analyze it in 2d and do it i would like i was fascinated by this structure all of you must have seen this many times this is the famous uh, tgv station designed by the genius of this century santiago calatrava and um, i looked at this structure and first uh, it made me very much afraid and uh, i mean we look at engineers and what is this i mean looks so complicated and then i decided that i i need to get to the bottom of this yes it looks grand it is it is fantastic but tomorrow if i want to design a structure like this what steps am i going to follow why is, uh, is this uh, something really fantastic yes the visualization the imagination that has gone into this structure is fantastic but uh, i also wanted to look at the structural system has he invented something fantastic Uh, is it like uh, you know uh, reinventing the wheel or something of that sort and then i found out no that is not the case he has used some very basic principle yes he has used them fantastically that is true but uh, yes uh, i can break this down into smaller elements into smaller portals and i can plot a bending moment and a shear force diagram for all of this you can see uh, it really looks fantastic and yes this is uh, this is the genius of this man who can visualize this but uh, let us look at the structural aspects of all this uh, i have some animations of uh, the whole structure and uh, uh, you can see that uh, it is actually two different structures which are uh, interlocked the station hall is a soaring assembly of glass and steel 
it is set uh, in the ground below which is a massive reinforced concrete podium the station hall roof is a series of cantilevered steel beams you can see here that uh, the station hall roof is a series of cantilevered steel beams that span across five slender arches you see the arches here all five arches share a single abutment on one side only while on the other side only the middle and the other two arches have free standing uh, abutments you can see from the first uh, pages here here you can see that there is uh, one support on one side and two supports on the other side i'm just showing this again and again for you to understand the structural framing uh this is this shows you how the lateral loads on the station hall roof are translated to the roof diaphragm and though this looks such a complicated structure i just come down again to this and uh, you can see that though uh, it looks so fantastic it can be translated into a single frame a single frame like this though this is not a beam but you can say uh, uh, differently shaped beams and these are cantilevers and then we can plot the bending moment diagram the shear force diagram and then yes when i see that it can be formulated in such a way then even i begin to feel that yes maybe with uh, some computers and some programs i would be able to design this so we start from a basic frame and then we go on and then we can uh, the, the level of complication that we can put into any structure is immense here you will see that uh, the same we are looking at the platform which uh, has been constructed here the platform uh, is it's again a very massive concrete structure but uh, but if you see it is again a simple uh, frame we have a, a main frame here and uh, uh, inclined columns these are also inclined columns which support the roof of the whole thing so if you look at the bending moment diagram you can find that yes you can quickly relate to these bending moment diagrams and uh, it looks so fantastic and uh, great but yes it can be put down and you know brought into a staggered shape if you see the roof the roof elements we can see in the next slide uh, the roof elements are also matched in a similar fashion where we are going back to oh sorry sorry something wrong i think we have seen this slide yes as i said the first thing that we showed that we have so many arches that's all and then we have cantilevered rafters we have some mullions and uh, the load from these cantilevers are taken on to these arches transferred to these mullions and through these series of arches and they are grounded or or brought down to our abutments so the structural framing system can be put down into these uh, simple uh, aspects i think we are missing something here but anyway that is the way i mean those fantastic structures can really be broken down and uh, analyzed we see that as a whole structure but when we come down to it we see that it is actually two structures superimposed on one on each other and each structure is uh, unconventionally thought of that is what happens i mean instead of having long beams we are having arches because of the long span the arch gives much more uh, optimized uh, cross sections uh, this is another uh, you can say structure that has fascinated me because of its shape again this is the serpentine gallery pa pavilion in the united Com kingdom and uh, uh, it is typical uh, you know you can say uh, exemplifies the history of Uh, so to say small romantic constructions that have taken we see in parks and gardens and uh, the so called you can say the follies of the 16th to the 19th century this design is based on two sculptures which were created by the architect himself and the goal of this project was to replicate the brittle 
fragility of the paper machine which uh, uh, and again maybe the light and dark that happens but uh, as structural engineers when we start looking at all this we see that this is essentially a, a steel frame on which we see that thin uh, semi transparent about these are grc panels they are 13 mm uh, in thickness and uh, the uh, steel frame is visible and uh, this steel frame is uh, you can say supporting these grc panels and these steel frames are simply supported on sandstone blocks you can see here these are just blocks so there is no you can say elaborate foundation but those sandstone blocks themselves act as uh, the blocks and the main uh, you can say the main uh, uh, issue here is that uh, we have to the analysis of the or the behavior of the glass fiber shell and its impact on the steel structure below has to be uh, you know sorted out and uh, that is what makes this structure that that much more interesting you can see this is the the sculpture which the architect had in mind and uh, this is the you can say skeleton which the structural engineer has put in place to generate that sort of a design so though the end uh, you can say the vision is different you can say that uh, there is there is lots of similarity in what the architect thinks and again all this abstract shapes are possible because they are put down into a finite shape and the resulting structure becomes a, a part of that shape we look at another structure this is the school of government at oxford in the united kingdom this is again a different sort of structure because the structure has a very you can say intricate geometry that is uh, it consists of a series of stacks you can say toroids toroids you can say are surfaces of revolution or which are uh, even the surface of revolution is a, a little unplanned and all these series of stacked toroids are offsetted and uh, these are offsetted from floor to floor and this offsets creates setbacks and cantilevers in the external elevation and again it gives a sort of a different facade Uh, to this this whole complex interaction of the structural members the vertical members are actually the walls are the supporting columns and the uh, slabs they are actually post tension slabs here they are also taking the load of the upper walls you can say and uh, upper slab and transferring all this effectively to the lower parts because of the complexity of all this this whole structure has to be analyzed as one we saw in the previous uh, two examples that we did that the whole structure can be put down and essentially we could you know break it down into maybe 2d uh, 2d structures which are mixed together in different planes and analyzed but a structure of this type cannot be analyzed only as a 2d it has to be and it is analyzed by creating a finite element model and uh, all the post tension slabs everything have to be analyzed uh, in this structure so a structure like this essentially relies heavily on the 3d modeling of the structure while the previous structures that we saw we could look at them or we could analyze them or we could break them up into distinct structures which would not again transfer loads on each other but are uh, have different you can say shapes another simple structure actually this is not not simple but if you see the completed shape it is a little complex because of the shapes heights and expectations also uh, this is actually a residence it is uh, as a, you can say a plinth area of around 700 square meters about you can say 7000 square feet and uh, there are some floors involved into this and uh, the architectural concept was such that it led to very few possible locations for columns and then it resulted in big zones of cantilevers and then uh, all this became combined with permanent action like all the walls were stones so the weight of the stone also had to be taken care of and uh, in such structures again we see that the vertical deformations are very important the vertical deformations could be within permissible uh, range as per the codal requirements but from the serviceability view they have to be restricted so that all the building elements are not damaged like windows or floors so in our is codes like we have 
restrictions of up to 20 mm so here in such structures we can see why these things happen but uh, again as we see a skeletal system was used here where some trusses have happened and uh, because of the varying shapes and the varying slopes we find that the depth of the trusses also could be uh, changed and uh, this depth led to greater stability and lesser deformations also you can see uh, uh, this is again a structural diagram and you can see how the shapes of each truss is varying and uh, but though it is varying we can see that it, it essentially follows a pattern uh, you can say a strict pattern which uh, which we we as engineers can begin to analyze without uh, very elaborate software as we see it's a steel structure it was designed as a steel structure and then the trusses so we could reduce the weight a lot and uh, because of the large cantilevers the deformations were very important another interesting building that i found was a bioinformatics institute at united kingdom as you can say the shape is really uh, different and this building looks different from all four the all four elevations of this building are different if you look at the structural framing plan you see that uh, steel has been used steel has been used quite effectively we see some bracings we see some castellated beams and uh, some bracings going right down to the floor this is actually a three storied uh, frame superstructure and uh, all the services are integrated into this and uh, the cladding solution in this had to be you know uh, become a part of this structure it uh, here this this cladding so the design aspect of this main led to the cladding being becoming a part of the structural system and uh, it was designed in such a way that these structures though they look free flow and free form minimum vibrations uh, would be transmitted to the foundations you can see that it looks more like a floating structure columns are inside and huge cantilevers on all sides and every side is different again another very interesting structure which i liked and uh, i like to study was this um, airport by uh, renzo piano this is actually a old structure built in 1994 but uh, you can see the spans are huge uh if you look at this work structure the roof uh, this structure has been built on a you can say artificial island and uh, the island is about 1.7 1.8 kilometers long and uh, the curved truss roof it spans around 270 feet that is about 82 meters over the main concourse and uh, you can say a linear structure the linear structure is uh, these are some sketches which the architect had prepared had envisaged in all this you can see that there are no finite uh, support lines everywhere but uh, now if you are to as a engineer if you have to analyze all this then how do you formulate the structure i mean i have some uh, here are some live views you can see the span of the truss is huge the supports are not in plane the supports are out of plane they are also staggered they are also sloping so uh, the complexities are so so high in this so there are so many secondary stresses so many out of plane forces some torsions that have to be evaluated in this so i just try to find out how how this whole thing could be uh, you can say uh, designed we find that the lateral loads on the main concourse roof are transferred through the roofing and glazing to the purlins the diagonal bracing in the roof plane carries these forces to the trusses of the structure and down through the inclined supports into the foundation the two gate wings are supported on a series of bowed steel rafters that use small thin tension rods on the interior to stiffen against the lateral wind loads you can see here that it's a huge span but fundamentally again uh, this can be Uh, analyzed as a uh, as a 2d structure and uh, because of the spans the the loadings are huge and uh, uh, the deflections you can say are quite i'll just take you to the deflection diagram again and then when when we start looking at the deflections or the bending moment diagrams then we find that we can very quickly relate to them it is not something 
spectacular or uh, by spectacular i mean something which is not understandable here we find uh, this is just a uh, diagram showing an animation showing the load paths uh, we find that not all the diagonals are effective for uh, a unidirectional load and because of this load you can see the support we have results in which can be broken up into two components and uh, then they will transfer the load to the lower floor the sides of uh, this floor is a small unique structure again it's it, it is made a little flexible and uh, we have a stay here which is given because it takes care of this wind so because of this we find that this whole thing is in compression and while this stay uh, the the vertical column becomes in tension and our stay remains in compression uh all of you must be aware that uh, this whole airport is built upon uh, filled up land and they were expecting lots of settlements and uh, so the foundations have been built uh, like they have provided jacks below for the foundations so that uh, whenever there are some settlements these jacks will lift the structure back to its uh, original position so all of you can appreciate the extent of the flexibility of the structure though it is a huge large span structure then it has to be a, a non brittle structure and it has to take care of such severe deformations so these are some of the you can say structures that we like we could just now run through some of the other odd shapes of structures we'll just have a look at their structural loading pattern i think we are running a little out of time and as i forgot to tell you in the beginning that we are going to take some questions if you have some questions keep uh, sending them to us they are being compiled and uh, you can say translated so that we could be able to i think another 3 uh, or 4 minutes we will be able to start taking the questions in the meanwhile uh, i would just like to you know show you some images and show you some structural images also of uh, all these so called odd or special shapes of buildings i will not elaborately go into the structural patterns of all these but uh, I, i will just try and run through them you can see that uh, i just tried to uh, make a note of all the issues that happen when um, we try to design these as essentially 3d structures then we have to have a different shape and the biggest problem in generating that 3d model is importing data from an architectural file that is very frankly the coordinates of that structure into this here i have you know put together some really very odd shapes that people have generated for buildings but then yes you can see some columns and beams here and they are supporting some odd walls again this is the bard college art center in new york the roof is looks like it's gone crazy but the pop stage in france and uh, i think the most recent the guggenheim music in bilbao which is uh, very good again when we are trying to build models we have so many issues the complexity of these irregular shapes and we find that there are no actual grids no finite main sectional planes they may not be essentially orthogonal or perpendicular to other planes then the biggest option is the spatial conf configuration and optimization of that spatial configuration then the division of the vertical floors generating 3d wire models it becomes a, a really big task here uh, this is a small example of a small structure that uh, could not be classified into you can say a sort of a, a regular structure but was built because the site conditions were like this the one side is triangular and the view on this side was really good so they could not afford to change that view so you can see a, a shell type roof has been planned it's a 9 meter span it's uh, designed with uh, wooden uh, uh, bullions and analyzed again you can see the stress contour diagrams you can see that though it doesn't follow a particular arch because of uh, having a fixed shape uh, uh, it could be modeled as a shell structure and it could be analyzed and uh, you can see from the contours stress contours that there is a definite pattern to the load distribution to it 
another interesting structure is this it's called the hollow hollow house in netherlands <clears throat> it is actually a playground for children and you can see that this is um, i mean just because these uh, inclined members are supporting something else we can call them as columns and this could be a beam or a column again as you say so the hierarchy of all our structural elements is gone this is a typical picture of a model and uh, you can see that yes it's it's a really complex model this all this have been prepared from hea and heb sections and uh, i think the large span and the heavy structures have made the overall this is just a view you can see the columns are decorated with uh, artificial leaves and makes the uh, area very interesting for the kids so again as we say here this structure essentially has to be treated as a, a 3d structure only and all the all you can say all the forces have to be resolved into various components and only then they can be here the structural distinction is really of no value you cannot call this a column and call this a beam and you know apply those parameters to them but you have to really analyze it find out the forces next interesting structure is this porch center in belgium this is again uh, uh, it was designed as a steel structure because it would reduce the weight of the building and again the architect has envisaged a lot of you can say cantilevered or open spaces you can see in this structural model some very huge cantilevers coming everywhere you can see here that same cantilever is translated here you can see it is really huge and here the uh, the criteria would only be serviceability here it would not be you know the codal requirement that the deflection has to fit into this no if the overall deflection of this cantilever would be more than maybe uh, 30 or 50 mm you will find all these clack glass and all the tiles above would start to crack so uh, you can see the uh, the structure has been designed another very interesting and very odd structure you can say is this uh, church uh, in the united states the interior of this church is also fantastic and you can see that this is a full glass facade the main sanctuary you can say is uh, surrounded by what they call as seven sails and a full height glazing it is uh, you can say that glazing is highlighting about 3000 square feet of hard glass wall the building plan is based on several, several you can say eclipses forming a geometrical basis for the sloped walls and the structural framing as i said again all the shapes are defined finite and uh, the walls are are bent or curved or shaped differently or rotated differently we saw uh, in our previous this thing the alpha and beta in those motifs is different and uh, here the architect has used everything possible to ensure that that simple shape is turned into a, uh, a really elaborate arrangement this is what it looks like from the inside it looks really fantastic this is that uh, glass facade which is uh, about 3500 square feet from from the outside you can see what a grand effect it has on the, on the overall structure this is another uh, this is the new headquarters of the council of the european union in brussels belgium it's a really complicated structure it had to be analyzed as a 3d structure you can see uh, it's a lantern shaped structure but then that lantern by itself by that shape is not stable so it had to be stabilized by two concrete cores you can see the atrium roof and the double facade which it has it encloses that so to say lantern a photovoltaic support structure is placed on top of the roof and there is a large verandal inner facade you can see the complications but since you can find that all the shapes that are gone into this remain finite and vertical here is a, from this you can get a idea of the you can see the colossalness of this whole structure and all this is held in place by these side uh, verandals so, so to say another fantastic structure is this uh, so to say bridge uh, built in switzerland you can say that uh, 
this bridge does not follow any conventional form or shape it is just i mean it is just you can say uh, a, a, a picture of imagination of somebody but then how it has been translated into a, a finite structure how you can say we have some pylons here and we have some post tensions uh, so to say members here which are supporting the deck and the structures have been so proportioned though in, in the photo it looks very sleek you can see the shapes and structures are so good that all these post tensioned elements could be easily placed and because of putting all this in 3d we could find that all these post tension do not intersect with each other they could be placed positively and they could you can say be stressed properly and that is how this whole thing was put together you can see the beauty of preparing a 3d model we have some images of the locations that have been put for for the tendons you can say it's a heavily uh, post tension okay i think uh, we are running short of time uh, shall we start taking any questions or we'll just run through some images this is another beautiful you can say hyperbolic paraboloid shaped abutment and deck slab of a bridge really complicated but really put together uh, nicely this was uh, analyzed in finite element by breaking it into so many elements and uh, the main issue as we see is the generation of the geometry of these structures once the geometry can be generated then we could go on and you can see though it's a bridge it looks so sleek and uh, the shape gives it stability uh the computer program uh, required nearly 3200 shell elements to be uh, prepared and modeled to use this structure and uh, again as we see the shape provided stability because the lower shell acted as a compression arc and the concrete being good in compression reduced the uh, amount of reinforcement required another picture of that shell i think we are running out of time so shall we just it's another simple multiple uh, structure that was created and again you see that we have some columns going down into the ground then we have some round beams supporting the columns and some further round beams which uh, support the roadway so to say do we have some questions also i think uh, we will just pass these uh, uh, images they, oh, they are very good but they are similar in the end we have this um, nike factory building and uh, again built with precast elements and so many things so uh, in conclusion we can say that though irregular shapes are they they should be generated out of some design patterns they can be they can be structurally stable if they are i mean we can put a, a particular finite pattern to it and they can in that case be analyzed effectively most free uh, we can say most free flow shapes the designs are mostly speculative and uh, it's very difficult to analyze them and the uh, structural stability of these structures will always be suspect uh, big thank you to all of you for being here and uh, supporting uh, watching this do we have time for some questions i have some questions and uh, i will just take whatever is possible uh, somebody has asked me what is the type of uh, structural system you use for a pedestrian bridge the first uh, the, uh, as i told you previously the primary structure consists of two irregular timber warren trusses and these trusses are supported by reinforced concrete portal frames these uh, trusses are sort of mechano like assembled and uh, uh, they create visual interest and they are held together as we say it is why i am saying it's 2d that i am saying it, it's a truss analyzed in 2d and the lateral stability of that trust is uh, supported by uh, by the ensured by those packers which they have been put you see this cross bracings you can call them also and that is why it is not essentially a 3d it is a 2d because all the loads are essentially taken by the 
uh, trusses in the longitudinal direction. Somebody has asked me which one software is best for analysis. Uh, there are lots of softwares available actually, but then you have to choose uh, the particular software for that particular type of structure. We cannot take one software and apply it to all structures. As we saw that there are some structures which essentially have to be analyzed as finite element. And there are many structures also which essentially can be analyzed as stiffness matrix and they will give you better solutions also. So it would depend upon the shape and type of the structure. Uh, you can see these images have been taken. There is a software called uh, SCI, which uh, has been used in most of the structures that I showed you. And um, it is very, very popular in foreign countries and very versatile, versatile also. It has lots of patterns and it's quite programmable. And so uh, it's, you can say uh, that it's up to you, I mean, uh, and also a software essentially is not only uh, important, but your uh, skill sets and your method of using it and interpreting it is I think what makes the structure more stable and conventional. Uh, any other questions? Can you also elaborate on the dimension? I'm sorry, I'm unable to understand this question. Uh, what is the significance of GRP you said? Okay. Uh, in that um, round uh, elliptical structure. See, the GRP forms the shell of the structure. You can say, uh, like we have uh, concrete slabs, the GRP is what is, uh, you can say, uh, GRP is again glass reinforced concrete. It is concrete and it is a thin shell, which, uh, which is actually taking all the loads and transferring all those loads to the steel frame. So like we have a thin shell made of concrete, here the shell has been made of GRP. Somebody has asked what loads can we apply on a circular structure? I'm sorry, I'm unable to understand this structure. We can apply all sorts of loads on circular structures. There is no, there is no load which we cannot apply it. I mean, it depends on how that load is generated, that's all. Else. The truss elements are designed considering them to transfer the actual loads only. Why is there bending moment? Okay, and we are still talking about the pedestrian bridge. As I told you that the whole structure is, though it is in one plane, all the members are not connected. Uh, the nodes are not, you can say, though they are defined, they are not as, uh, as uh, the nodes of a truss where all the members converge. You can find the nodes. We have a diagonal coming into the node and the, the vertical goes off from another place. All the nodes do not, are not essentially nodes where all the structural elements converge. So because of this, uh, you can say there are some secondary stresses which are uh, involved into the structure because of the actual forces in those members, they are transmitted not through the nodes, but some cases through the members of the truss and that is why there are moments and that is why the whole structure also had to be analyzed and checked for these secondary moments. Somebody has just uh, asked me, please suggest the uh, feasibility in the Indian scenario. Uh, I would suggest that it is up to us uh, engineers to prompt or to provoke all the architects to go a little beyond their uh, regular domains and try and plan these structures so that we get a chance to design them. I think there are lots of structures which are coming up in India also, which are being 
very elaborately tackled and designed and yes we are not uh, as used to fantastic shapes as the foreign countries but yes things are things are happening and if we can give the confidence to the architects i think they will still come up with uh, fantastic structures some people are still thinking that uh, all these structures have been designed as by me as i told you in the beginning this is just a study which i have done in our last webinar i have shown you some odd shaped structures which i had designed and here this is you can say my my i have shared some of my study material with you just to ensure that uh, whatever uh, i mean we learn from looking at uh, done or prepared buildings and this is what i try to do oh, i think no there are some questions which i don't uh, Uh, are these structures eco friendly but i mean that is not the purpose of this uh, webinar i was just trying to you know understand the structural systems uh, used in all these odd shapes are any structures available in india yes there are lots of uh, structures with these shapes available or being done in india or which have already been done i think that's all okay so thank you all of you for this uh, opportunity and especially to tata tiscon for giving me this opportunity once again and uh, allowing me to share my you can say my my studies and my experiences with all of you thank you very much